Uh, so today we named our four captains, uh, and uh, I think we've got four great captains that will uh, lead our 2016 football team. Um, you know, uh, look, collectively, I think they all uh, carry uh, not only, you know, everyone wants to talk about leadership, and certainly they have that, but they, they, they have the experience of understanding, um, you know, what it takes on a day-to-day -day basis to um, uh, bring others along with them uh, in, in the, the intense spotlight that, that, that is Notre Dame. And uh, as we enter the season, things start to shift and focus on um, playing games and, and what uh, goes on with that. And um, so these guys have been in the battles, um, have uh, maneuvered through them, have got great experience. Uh, and they're, they're great young men too, great character. Um, and uh, I trust them to, to be great representatives of Notre Dame both on and off the field. So our captains are James Anawalu, um, who incidentally will be um, you know, our starting uh, Sam linebacker, uh, but has the most career starts as a wide receiver as well going into the game. Uh, so, uh, he, he has uh, a great deal of experience here at Notre Dame. Also, Isaac Rochelle uh, will be one of our captains. Um, Tori Hunter and Mike McGlinchey. Uh, those will be our four captains for, for 2016. And, and, you know, Isaac is, uh, and if I could talk about each one of them, you know, if you talk about Isaac Rochelle on the defensive line, he's kind of really taken over that room from uh, Sheldon Day, you know, been the leader, um, you know, there's a lot of young players in that room. He's been a great mentor. Um, and uh, I, love, I love the way he handles himself on a day-to-day -day basis, um, really loves Notre Dame, um, understands Notre Dame, and uh, is a great, great ambassador for our football program. James Onowalu, same thing. Uh, here's a guy that um, has made himself into a uh, a great player for us. Uh, started at the wide receiver position. Um, is well respected by all of his peers. Um, one of our hardest workers, and and now has put himself in a position to uh, to lead you know our football team. I think we know uh, about Tory Hunter. Um, you know, a veteran of our our team hasn't played um, maybe as much, but he's he's played big roles for us. He's um, He's a guy that uh, I think this year we'll be counting on to do quite a bit. One of our only returning, um, you know, skill players on the offensive side at the wide receiver position. Um, but again, a guy that walks the walk and talks the talk and that um, backs it up both on and off the field and will be a great mentor to a lot of young receivers. And then finally, Mike McGlinchey, uh, who is, um, you know, a, a guy that is not afraid to speak up, um, speak his mind. and, and um, He's done a great job of really growing into uh, his leadership role. So um, really, really pleased to announce uh, those four uh, as our captains for 2016 and, and, and leading, leading our football team. So with that, open it up to questions. Brian, last year, you said there were a, a, a vast amount of candidates for the, the captain's job. Was this a little bit more focused this year? Yeah, I think there were some other guys, Tim, that, that were under consideration for that. But I think when we whittled it down, it, it clearly kept coming up with maybe, you know, a half dozen guys that, that were clearly above the rest. And, and these four guys um, really, I think, um, rose to the top. Brian, do you trust the team as a whole, I guess, in light of this past weekend? Uh, what was your message to just the team as a whole? Yeah, what we talk about stays amongst the team. Certainly, uh, we've, we've addressed, um, you know, anything that happens, you know, with our football team. We have a number of conversations uh, daily about um, what's expected. Uh, they know exactly what's expected of them on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, those are conversations that are between me and the team. Are the four guys who weren't suspended practicing currently? Uh, yes, those four players that um, were suspended um, are currently practicing, yes. Brian, has Devin Butler's status changed in any way from uh, Sunday? Can you indefinitely suspend him? No, he is still indefinitely suspended. He is not practicing. He is not 
uh, in the building. Uh, he is not part of any football team uh, related activities at all. What is the difference of why you indefinitely suspended him versus you throwing Max Redfield off the team? Each, each one is, uh, is, is separate in their own. I think my statement is, is, is pretty clear that, um, you know, a lot of these decisions, um, you know, are, are, are joint and that uh, there are other implications and uh, the university is involved in, in these matters as well. Brian, what was your first reaction when you heard the New York news from Friday night? Because you spend so much time with these players. You're mm -hmm. like a father figure to them. And as a father yourself, mm -hmm. as a person, what was your first reaction when you heard about these arrests? Like any other father, I think. Uh, my first one was disappointment. Um, you know, and then I think that that disappointment, um, you know, kind of moved on to embarrassment for the university. And then I was um, mad as hell. I think those are the three stages, I think that I went through. And what's the message you hope your players take away from this past week? Well, there's so many different messages. I think, I think you know, if, if you just stick with what I just said in terms of the three emotions of a parent, um, you know, they're life lessons. And, um, you know, uh, one, there's, it's, there, there's, it's more than just you. And, and um, so we talk about selfish decisions. Uh, we talk about representing more than just yourself. You represent a university. You represent a program. You represent, um, you know, an entire uh, fan base. So um, those are the things that we talk about more than anything else is that it's just not about you. Brian, with Stefferson White in, in that group, do you know whether they're going to be available to play against Texas at this point? Does it, does it involve the university's disciplinary arm? Where are you with those four? Yeah, as I said in my statement, Eric, um, the, 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 there could be further actions uh, right. through the university, and that, that will have to take its course. Um, you know, I think the, the university is, um, you know, certainly looking at all, all of these cases and, and will be, um, you know, certainly um, expediting or moving quickly through the process. Um, but it, th those matters are out of my hands. Um, I've dealt with it internally. Um, they've been uh, handled uh, within the program. Um, and uh, the rest will be about what the university does. If they leave it up to just your decision, will those four play against Texas? They'll be available to play, yes. They'll be available to play. Brian, what, what can you tell us about Devin Studstill and his readiness to step onto that big stage in the opener in Austin, Texas? What can I tell you? Uh, we'll have a true freshman on the road uh, playing against um, a talented team. Um, you know, Devin is uh, a kid that has uh, a lot of talent. He's a very confident player, uh, but you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll all be kind of looking at it like you will be, you know. Uh, he's a very confident player. He's talented. He had a pretty good spring game. He's got some experience now going through the spring. Um, but, you know, I think we'll have to play a few guys at that position. I don't think he's going to go out there and take every snap. And that, the other guys maybe would start with Jalen Elliott playing there, another freshman? Or? Um, no, I think there's some other options there, too, you know. I think we've got a sixth-year player back there who's got a lot of experience that, that, that would fit in nicely as well. What about long-term with depth at that position? Are you looking at flipping an offensive player or moving a corner? No, no, I think we're okay there. Uh, we, feel, we feel pretty good in, in terms of the depth there. Uh, Nico Fertitta's done a nice job. He's a very solid, consistent player back there. You know, Jalen, obviously, you mentioned. Um, you know, Devin. Um, you know, we, we've got an, we feel like we've got enough back there that uh, we'll be solid. Brian, no, in, light uh, of your quarter, in light of your quarterback um, decision last week to say that, you know, they, they would both be starting, mm -hmm. um, and then Coach Sanford saying, you know, we'll be watching to see how they react and how they carry themselves and how they execute. Since then, what have you noticed about each of your quarterbacks in how they have handled it 
and how they are executing and displaying their leadership? Um, I think they've, they've, they've become more, um, certainly, you know, when the decision was made, there's always a little bit of, you know, I wish I was the starter. Um, but since that decision, they, they really have embraced knowing that both of them will play and they both have to be ready. So I think what I've seen more than anything else is a sharpness in their practice and in particular in their preparation that they know they're both going to play. They've been really sharp. Now, they've had really good camps, both of them. But it's, it's a, even sharper than that in the sense that it's not, not that they've made more plays, but they're louder in their communication. They're just a little bit more assertive because you know, uh, they know they're both going to play. What a little bit of an edge so. maybe they've gotten now? Yeah, it's different. You know, they know they're playing, so yeah. you can just tell that there's that sense of, I'm playing, I better, I better get after this now. What have seven years here for you helped with dealing with the situation you faced on the weekend? Well, <laughs> Al, it's, it's a question that I'm fortunately um, equipped to answer. <laughs> um, you know, you have to be prepared in, as a college coach, unfortunately, to deal with, you know, some poor decisions. And, and, you know, they crop up. And I think you have to be as fair, but you also have to be um, quick in making decisions. Um, and, and when they don't square with your mission or philosophy uh, in your program or your university, um, you can't be afraid to make um, decisions. And, and you can't be swayed by, um, you know, external factors. You got, you got to do the right thing. And, and I think that that's probably what I've experienced more than anything else. So Dexter Williams mentioned that day that you got some work with Kick Returner. I know you wanted to give C.J. Sanders a bit of a break. Yes, he's, at, he's logged a lot of miles coming off an injury. Is, is Sanders now indefinitely at this point have to move back there as number one or are you looking at anybody else if Williams can't go? No, we, so, so we're rotating Sanders, uh, Dexter, and Josh, you know, in, in terms of kickoff return, yeah. did you say? Yeah, those three guys are getting uh, a, a three-man rotation back there right now. So all three of those guys have been, you know, taking, you know, pretty much a third of the reps back there. Adams, you say Josh, you mean Josh Adams? Yes, Josh Adams. He's healthy and clean. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah, he looks good. So um, beginning Friday was the first time we really saw him running out and feeling comfortable. And then today he looked really good. Today was really, he got banged around a little bit today. Today we thudded the back up. This was the first day where, you know, he looked like Josh Adams. So it was good to see. Brian, with everything that happened over the weekend, does it change? your policy or maybe just the way you, you allow the kids to have free time and be able to go out? Um, you know, I think, you know, each year uh, we reassess based upon circumstances. So, you know, those things change from year to year. Uh, and so we've, we've, we've decided, you know, uh, amongst ourselves, you know, what we believe is, is right for this group. Will they be allowed to have any more free time? We, we've decided what's appropriate for this group. Brian, I know you haven't given a captaincy to a quarterback since you've been here. Is there just too much duty of being a captain on top of being a quarterback? And did you consider Deshaun and Malik for that this year? I did. They were they were part of the group that was there, that was under consideration. Certainly, uh, both of them uh, would be good captains. Um, I'm certain that. Um, that, that, that they would have uh, made very good captains. Um, so I just think that that's kind of the, the luck of the draw at this point. You had talked a little about Chris Fink last week. Yeah. Have you uh, slighted or undersold a little bit in practice yet? He receives a scholarship this week, the decision behind that. Yeah, uh, he's been really solid. Um, and I just thought that, that what I wanted to see was that consistency kind of make its way through the entire camp before we made a decision on him because um, we could move other guys into that position because Corey Holmes has had a really good camp and Corey, Cor I could move Corey into Z and that bumps Fink out, but Fink held him off. And not that, that Corey can't play in there too, 
Um, but I had other options there, you know, and Fink just really just won, you know, won us over with his consistent play and then his special teams play. He's a pretty dynamic returner as well. And so I think with that dual kind of role that, that he possesses, he earned a scholarship. Will he be back on the cost or is he just behind CJ and Funds? He, he's, he's a guy that, that, you know, we could use in certain situations, um, two guys back there in weather conditions and, you know, when we need dual returners, um, when we feel like they could have you know, weather conditions and wind. And, and uh, if we need to give CJ a blow, we feel very confident with, with him going out there um, as a 1B. Um, so you, you'll probably see him this year catching punts too. Brian, you, you said that both quarterbacks would play against Texas yeah. the other day, but you didn't say who would start. Has that? No, I have not made that decision yet. Okay. No. What about the right guard uh, situation? Colin McGovern will start there. What would be the biggest challenge of replacing Max? I think just, you know, I mean, Max was an outstanding player, you know, and he was having a great, great camp. He had a great spring. He's athletic. He's fast. Um, you know, so, so you're taking a really good player off your defense. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to plug in a guy there that uh, I think will we'll get the job done for us. Brian, is there, your leadership has been so important in pulling away from some of the adversity you've had in mm -hmm. August. What have you seen from this leadership group and, and your team overall since the weekend? Well, we had to adjust and, and we had to, you know, self-correct a few things here over the last few days. And, and you know, today was kind of, you know, we resailed, you know, with some, some captains that are, that are clearly going to be great leaders. And so, you know, we're a little bit of work in progress right now, but we've got We've got the right people in, in the right position. Um, our, our time together over the last three days have been well spent. Um, and um, I like where we're going. And uh, we'll be ready to beat Texas. Brian, with Max, was it a matter of enough is enough, considering his past and with being in a car with the four in the past? Yeah, and just, you know, there's a lot of things going on there. I, I think, you know, anytime you dismiss somebody from the program, um, you know, th that's serious, you know, so I, I would say the best way to characterize that is that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's got to be serious for me to, to dismiss somebody, you know, from the program. Do you know what his plans are? I do not. Brian, do whose handgun was it? Do you know whose handgun was? I do not. Was? I do not. Jay Hayes healthy? He's much better. He was practicing today, um, so it was good to see him out there uh, moving around. Um, you know, we feel like uh, if we can get him back to 100% um, by this weekend, that he should be a full go for Texas. Coach, you mentioned before camp that Last one, of the, one of the biggest reasons you were confident in improving the defense was the experience third year. Can you talk, kind of talk about how this camp has been different and sort of where your defense is now being in year three and, and what you expect? Yeah, um, I would say just, you know, th there's layers that lead you up to this, right? So the layers are, um, just the comfort level with, with everybody um, on the defense from, uh, from the coaching staff uh, uh, to your defensive linemen, linebackers. So there's just that comfort level. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody knows what to expect on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so that's the residual of, you know, three years uh, of that being laid down. Then you've got a veteran and Niles that really knows the defense well. We don't have alignment issues. We're, we're solid there. You've got veteran leadership up front with, with an Isaac Rochelle and, and veteran presence in the back end uh, with a guy like Cole Luke. So having veterans on defense has really helped. So veteran players, uh, defensive staff that's been together, laid this down over the last three years. Very calming, you know, from that perspective. Not a lot of guys running around. Um, not knowing what they're doing. Does that help you with you know, not needing that cleanup guy like you've talked about with Jalen now that there isn't that guy, there isn't that Sheldon Day to kind of put more emphasis on get everybody kind of doing? I'll take a Jalen um, <laughs> if I can get one <laughs> any day. Um, but, you know, certainly, you know, it puts an emphasis on, you know, our run fits. But, you know, collectively we have to make up for a loss of that and that, 
you hope is now the uh, the next elevation of this defense and that everybody's doing their job and and you don't need a Jalen Smith to make these remarkable plays. Right, is there a timetable for to Part of Devin's, the last one. Is there a timetable to determine Devin's permanent status with the program or how, how are you guys handling I know he's suspended indefinitely but Yeah, I, I think I, I think the uh, you know it, it, it will be expedited um, you know given the, the, the current circumstances. Thanks everybody. We'll have those four guys there.